Well, good morning, everyone. I'm just as obvious with Audible today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. Thank you so much for tuning in. This morning, we started a little late this morning. We had to get all the notes and everything in order. <clears throat> and so uh, we're going to go maybe nine minutes late. But thank you so much for your patience. And thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And, of course, look at the scene behind me that looks familiar to you. We are back home. As a matter of fact, we are back home at main headquarters in Lincoln, Rhode Island. We just got back from Las Vegas, Nevada, where uh, Patty went to her conference for her paparazzi jewelry business, and she was presented with an award there. And so we went there to uh, give her that support, and um, I was extremely proud of her going up on that stage and receiving her award. And, of course, we had an opportunity to uh, discover the historical sites there in Las Vegas. And I know Las Vegas has a very bad reputation. Believe me, I've seen that up close and personal. My first time going out there to Las Vegas. My first time going out there to uh, Nevada. And uh, it, they, they don't call it Sin City for nothing, folks. And so, uh, But we went out there. <clears throat> to um, discover the place, to look at the historical sites out there, and of course to attend her paparazzi uh, conference. And uh, all in all, her and I had a wonderful time out there. And so we're back home, and we're only here for about uh, less than a week. And then Thursday, we board a plane again. And this time we're going to be flying to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we will get picked up and then we will make our way to Jane Lou, West Virginia. Uh, we'll take a couple of days to uh, spend with some friends out there and then we will make our way to Lorraine, Ohio, where I am scheduled to preach at a church out there in Lorraine, Ohio. Of course, um, Kathy Bogan is a member of that church and folks we are looking forward to going to Lorraine Ohio and so uh, I'm excited about it this is the first time that uh, we will be um, going to this church out here and uh, we're looking forward to a Bible prophecy conference I believe this conference will be uh, Saturday and Sunday. Of course, they see Kathy Bolton is in the room uh, right now. <clears throat> and actually, we're going to be staying with her. We're going to be staying with her at her place and then uh, preach at their church. And then we'll make our way back <clears throat> into West Virginia. Well, actually, we're going to be uh, visiting our daughter in Indiana after this conference. And then make our way back to Virginia. And of course, Kathy says, our church family is so excited. Well, Kathy, we're just as excited to uh, be there with all of you. And so we are uh, looking forward to this and looking forward to seeing what the Lord is going to do while we are there. Now, guys, you can also visit my website at Today in Bible Prophecy. Dot org. When you're there, click on August Rosado Speaking Schedule. And uh, you would go to my church, and you will see that on August the 13th, I will be at Grace Baptist Church. Grace Baptist Church in Lorraine, Ohio. Look at my speaking schedule. See if I'm going to be at a church near you. If you're a pastor... And you'd like to have me come and preach at your church. Well, all you simply need to do, folks, is give me a holler. Send me an email, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com. And let me know that you'd love to have me come and preach at your church. Wherever the Lord opens the door, doesn't matter if it's a small church, <clears throat> medium church, or a large church. I don't go by the numbers again, folks. I know a lot of, you know, prophecy, big wig teachers out there 
You know, they got to speak at big churches. And I don't operate that way. I'll preach at a church. Doesn't matter the size. I just want to come and minister the word of God to God's people. Because this is ministry. This isn't a business. This is ministry. And we want to minister to folks out there <clears throat> who are hungry for God's prophetic word. And so you can all just give me a holler, email, or Facebook messenger. Let me know that you would like to have me come and preach in your church on Israel, Bible prophecy, and current events. And folks, we're living in very, very exciting times. But we're also living in very dangerous times. The Lord could return at any moment. And we see that the prophetic seeds are beginning to sprout, folks. And we see that prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. We could be that generation that could see the soon return of the Lord, which is the reason why this morning I want to talk about the Magog Persian threat. And we see that threat, folks, coming into clear focus. So we see that prophecy is on course <laughs> to being fulfilled. I see that Brian Biggs is in the room. I just preached for Brother Brian Biggs out there in Millbank, South Dakota. And uh, <clears throat> we just had a wonderful time out there with them at Millbank Baptist Church. And him and I have this little thing going. And uh, so when he says, yes, folks, <laughs> it's a private joke there. But Brother Brian Biggs, if you're ever in the Millbank, South Dakota area, stop on by and say hello to Brother Brian Bates and the people at Millbank Baptist Church. I just had a wonderful time with them. And uh, what a blessing it was to, to preach there. It was a Sunday through Sunday Bible prophecy conference. So we just had a wonderful time out there with Brother Bates and all of our friends there at Millbank. Baptist Church. Many of you are just coming into the room and I uh, can't keep up with all the names that are there. And with Terry Walsh, Stevens, Lynn Spears, Brother Biggs, Kathy Bogan, William Manis, Janice Waterberger from the Left Coast, all of them, all of you guys are here this morning. If you have a Bible prophecy question, type your question into the comment box. If you have a comment, type your comment into the comment box. We'll try to get to it. If I can't, I'll try to get to it after the broadcast. And I always encourage all of you folks to bring your Bibles with you. Get a notepad and paper and follow along with me as we look at the prophetic passages that clearly reveal what is going on right now because what Ezekiel saw 2,600 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, it is coming into fruition right now. Good to see Shelly Boone, who's in the room with us. We were just with Shelly and her husband, Vic, yesterday at our grandson Bentley's birthday party in Westport, Massachusetts. So great to see Shelly Boone in the room with us. So... What we're going to do right now, and I'll have more to say at the end of the broadcast because we, we started a little late. Uh, good to see Chris Todd Otis Davidson, who is in the room with us today. So again, when you have an opportunity, visit my website after the broadcast, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Navigate around the website, check out the newsletter, sign up for the newsletters, uh, look at all of our new stories on Twitter and our bookstore, all that good stuff on there. You can check that out. Uh, good to see John. Uh, let me see if I get this right here. John 
Acuna, there we go, D. Ocampo, and Julie Wear Dunn. She's a member of our church, Greater Rhode Island Baptist Temple. She's in the house with us this morning. And again, every, people are just storming into the room right now, and we are humbled by that, and we really do appreciate that. Let me uh, invite you to take your Bibles and go with me to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter number 38. And uh, we see that uh, Mary Therese Mysterio is also with us. She just came into the room. Good to have you with us, Mary. Ezekiel 38. Hey, Brother Bill Cameron. Brother Bill Cameron is out of Parkerville, Mississippi at Community Baptist Church. I've preached for him a few times. And we're looking forward to preaching for him down the road. So, Brother Bill, good to have you with us in the room this morning. This is a prophecy in Ezekiel chapter number 38 concerning a prophecy against Gog, G-O-G. In Ezekiel 38, beginning in verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. Now you'll notice the phrase, Son of man, is mentioned 93 times in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel was called Son of Man. The only other person in the Bible who is called Son of Man is the Lord Jesus. Throughout the New Testament, he is called Son of Man 79 times. Ezekiel is called Son of Man 93 times. He says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses, and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Verse 6, Gomer, and all of his bands, the house of Togarma, of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. So Ezekiel writing 2600 years ago describes a coming invasion on Israel. An invasion that will come from the north and an invasion that will come from the east. As a matter of fact, it's an invasion coming from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. But what I want to focus on this morning is the invasion that will come from the north and the invasion that will come from the east. There would be an unholy alliance between two of these nations, one coming from the north, and the other coming from the east. Ezekiel was a Jewish prophet who was taken during the second wave of the Babylonian invasion of Jerusalem in 597 BC. Daniel was taken during the first wave of that Babylonian invasion in 607 BC. Both Daniel and Ezekiel were the Jewish prophets to the Jewish people during the Babylonian captivity. Ezekiel saw a day where his modern day descendants, the Jewish people of today, would be attacked in an attempt to wipe them out. Satan in the end times will use these two nations to try to accomplish that. Now, 
many try to put a time in on this Ezekiel invasion. Some say before the rapture, others after the rapture, others before the tribulation period, others during the first three and one half years of the tribulation period, or the last three and one half years of the tribulation period. However, the Bible does not give us a specific timeline of this invasion of Israel, so we can't be dogmatic. All indicators seem to suggest that it might possibly be during the early part of the tribulation period. And the reason why I say that is based on Ezekiel 38 in verse number 9. Uh, where it tells us, folks, actually I should say Ezekiel 39.9, Ezekiel 39.9, where it says, And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire, and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the handstaves, and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire, seven years. So Ezekiel 39.9 tells us that once this invasion has been destroyed, Israel will burn their weapons for seven years. Some would take this to be the seven years of tribulation or Daniel's 70th week of prophecy. In any case, Israel will burn the weapons after this attack has been subdued. So by looking at Ezekiel 39.9, it seems to imply that this invasion will happen early on in the tribulation period. And once this invasion has been subdued, it will take Israel seven years to burn the weapons of the invading armies. I know that there are other interpretations of Ezekiel 39.9. I'm just throwing one of them out there to you. The attackers will form a coalition with a common goal to take a spoil and a prey. And that's exactly what Ezekiel Chapter 38 and verse number 12 tells us to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nation, that's the Jewish people, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Now Gog is coming to take a spoil. For Arab allies are coming for prey. The Arab allies, their prey is the Jewish people. Gog, they're coming to take a spoil. Because Gog has always coveted the rich mineral area of the Dead Sea. They have wanted that for centuries. They want to come to take that spoil. But the Arab allies are coming for a prey. They want to wipe the Jewish people out. Magog wants a spoil. Persia wants the prey. And we see this coalition forming right now. But in order for us to understand what's going to happen in the end, you've got to go back to the beginning, folks. Who was Magog? Well, if you look at Genesis chapter 10 and verse number 2, Magog was the son of Japheth, who was the son of Noah. Japheth's sons were Gomer, Magog, Tubal, and Meshach. Now that's Genesis chapter 10 and verse number 2. Gomer had a son. His name was Togarma. So, we see 
the family here who would become nations. So again, in order to understand what's going to happen in the end, you got to go to the beginning. Now, Magog departed from his brothers, and he went and settled north of the Caspian and Black Sea. Now, according to the Jewish historian, Josephus Flavius, Magog settled north of the Caspian and Black Sea. What nation today is north of the Caspian and Black Sea? Look at a modern-day map, ladies and gentlemen, of the Middle East. Take your finger, find Israel, that tiny little state, no bigger than the state of New Jersey. Take your finger, put it on the state of Israel, then go all the way north, and the first country you're going to hit north of Israel is Russia. Russia is north of the Caspian and Black Sea. Russia is north of the Jewish state of Israel. But when you look at Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 2, it mentions Meshach Tubal. Look at Ezekiel 38 and verse number 2. He says that Gog comes out of the land of Magog. He is the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And then when you drop down to verse number 6, it mentions Gomer and Togomer. So, Gomer, Tubal, Meshach, and Togomer. Those four boys went and settled south of the Caspian and Black Seas. What country today settles south of the Caspian and Black Sea? Well, folks, that's Turkey. Turkey in biblical times consisted of those four boys. Gomer, Tubal, Meshach, and Togama. They make up what is today the Islamic State of Turkey. Turkey is located south of the Caspian and Black Sea. And they have a radical Islamic president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, a radical Islamist. Ezekiel 38 and verse number 2 says, Gog, G-O-G. Gog is a person, ladies and gentlemen. Gog is a personality. He will be the leader of this invasion. Gog comes from the land of Magog. Gog is a personality. Many people ask me today, August, do you believe that Russian President Vladimir Putin could be the Gog? I don't know, folks. All I can tell you is simply this. He would make a great candidate. Given his radical behavior, in the Middle East today, his disrespect for the sovereignty of other nations today, even invading their territorial airspace or their territorial waters. He doesn't care. Vladimir Putin is a very, very dangerous individual, extremely dangerous individual. And Vladimir Putin is a buddy to the Arab world today. So could he be the God? I don't know. It could be a possibility, but I don't know. All I do know is this. God is the personality. He is the leader of this invasion. God comes from the land of Magog. He is the chief Prince of this invasion on Israel. The Hebrew word for chief is Rosh, R O S H, meaning the head or the leader. 
Now, many try to take the Hebrew word rosh to mean rasha or rasha. I don't think that's what it's talking about there. Even though I do believe Magog is modern day rasha, the Hebrew word rosh just simply means he is the chief, he is the head, he is the leader of this invasion. God will lead Gomer, Meshach, Tubal, and Togomer. All areas that make up modern day Turkey today to join Russia in this invasion on Israel. Ezekiel 38 2 and Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 6. Both these nations, Russia and Turkey, will be in total alliance against Israel. And folks, we see these seeds being planted right now. But we also see in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 5, another nation who will join this unholy alliance. Again, get your Bibles. Look at Ezekiel 38, 5. Persia. Persia. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. With them with Russia and Turkey, all of them, with Shield and Helmut. Now, we know that Ethiopia will attack from the south. Ethiopia, along with Sudan and Somalia, all Arab nations that have no diplomatic ties with Israel whatsoever, all of them ruled by Sharia law, Islamic law. Libya, known in biblical times in Genesis 10-6 as Put, P-U-T or P-H-U-T, I want to spell it, they'll attack from the west. Ethiopia, Sudan, Somalia will attack from the south. Russia and Turkey will come from the north. Persia will come from the east. Persia in 1936 changed their name to Iran. Iran is a sworn, a sworn enemy to Israel that calls for Israel's destruction on a daily basis. You say, well, August, why the name change? Why would they change their name from biblical Persia to Iran? The reason for the name change from Persia to Iran, Iran simply means, you ready for this? Land of the Aryans. With the rise of Hitler during the 1930s, the word Aryan came to be associated with the Nazi definition of, quote, being of non-Jewish Caucasian descent. Especially the blue-eyed, blonde-haired Nordic races that Adolf Hitler himself favored, and he hoped to make a master race. As a matter of fact, in 1936, Dr. Hajlma Shah, who was a Nazi, he was of the Nazi economics minister in Germany, noted the Aryan origin of the Persians and encouraged them and encouraged the Persian president, Reza Shah Pahlavi, to ask foreign delegates to use the term Iran, land of the Aryans, instead of the biblical name, Persia. They all agreed to it and changed their name from Persia to the land of the Aryans, Iran. That was the reason why they changed their name. It was because of the Nazi regime. As the New York Times explained at that time, quote, at the suggestion of the Persian legation in Berlin, the Tehran government on the Persian New Year March 21st, 1936, substituted Iran for Persia. 
as the official name of the country. Defenders of the name change point to its use by the Greek historian cited that Ariot means noble. Because, folks, the noble cause for the Hitler regime and the Iranian regime is to eradicate the Jews from the earth. That is their noble cause, in their eyes anyway. Iran shares the modern goal with anti-Zionists and anti-Semites. Folks, it's the elimination of the Jewish people from the face of the earth. That's exactly what Psalm 83 is all about. Psalm 83 records an Arab attack upon the Jewish state of Israel. And, uh, and we can identify those Arab nations today mentioned in a, uh, Psalm chapter 38. Psalm, I'm sorry, not Psalm 38, Psalm 83. Psalm 83. And verse number four is the goal of the Arab world today, where it says, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. When Iran's president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, in 2012, speaking to terrorists in Tehran Square, made this statement, we as Muslims must rise up and wipe Israel off the face of the earth that their name may be forgotten forever. Wow, that's almost verbatim of Psalm 83, verse number 4. Let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now we know, based on Bible prophecy, Russia will team up with Iran to, in, uh, to invade Israel. Russia is the sugar daddy of the Arab world in the Middle East today. And they have close military ties with Iran. They have close military ties with Syria. And they just patched up relations with Turkey. Recently, President Donald Trump said that U.S. Russian ties are at a dangerously all-time low. The United States just signed sanctions against Russia. And because of that, Russia responded by kicking U.S. diplomats out of the country. And Iran is warning America not to walk away from the nuclear deal created by Obama, which was absolutely disastrous. The United States is alarmed that Turkey is about to purchase S-400 air defense systems from Russia. So folks, you see that things are beginning to heat up. Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse number 8 tells us this. Again, take your Bibles and read with me in Ezekiel 38, 8. And it says this. After many days, thou shalt be visited. In the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Ezekiel 38 8 tells us that in the latter years or the end times, Russia and her Arab allies will come into the land of Israel. In verse number 11 it says, Israel is dwelling in unwalled villages, dwelling safely. It says in verse number 11, And thou shalt say, I will go up into the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls. 
and having neither bars or gates. Now, folks, <laughs> that is not the case right now in Israel. Israel has her walls up. Israel has her guard up. They even have a security wall running through the so-called West Bank, which biblically is Judea and Samaria, to keep Palestinian terrorism up. But when the Antichrist confirms a peace covenant with Israel, guaranteeing her seven years of peace and security, then Israel will let her guard down. The walls come down. The security comes down because they trust their security to an individual who comes out of the revived Roman Empire. The little horn of Daniel chapter 7 and verse number 8. He is a Gentile world ruler. He is a prince that comes from the people who destroyed the city and the sanctuary in Daniel 9.26. That would be the Romans. He is of Roman descent. Not Islamic, not Arab. Give me a break. The Jews will never trust their security to any Islamist or any Arab for that matter. They will put their security in their hands of the Gentile world ruler in Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 1. The little horn of Daniel 7 8, who comes out of the ten horn revived Roman Empire. The ten horns, Daniel chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 21, Revelation 13, 1, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 17, 3, 7, 12, 16. The revived Roman Empire, the ten horns, we believe, of the European Union. The embryo, the infrastructure for the revived Roman Empire empire. They will trust their security to that Gentile world ruler of Revelation 13. 1. And when that happens, Ezekiel 38, 8 says, all of them will dwell safely. Verse number 11. They will be living in the land of unwalled villages, dwelling safely. They will have no bars, no walls, or no gates whatsoever. And when Israel lets their God down, then verse number 12 says, Russia, Turkey, Iran, and her Arab allies will attack. Verse 12, they come to take a spoil and a prey. Russia is coming to take a spoil because Russia has always coveted the area of the Dead Sea. They've always wanted the rich minerals of the Dead Sea but could never get any access to it. They're coming to take spoil. However, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Ethiopia, Sudan, Somalia, they're coming for a prey. They can care less about the spoil. They're coming to take a prey. They want to see the total annihilation of Israel. And that's the reason why Iran calls for Israel's destruction on a daily basis. The Jerusalem report of the Jerusalem Post just reported that Iran and Russia just enhanced their military ties. We see this coalition, the Ezekiel coalition, coming into Focus. We see in Ezekiel 38, 14 and 15. Therefore, son of man, prophesying, saying to God, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou know it. When, when Russia and her Arab allies know that Israel is dwelling safely, they let their guard down, that's when they attack.
verse 15. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, or the literal Hebrew says from the far north. Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army, and thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days or the end time. And I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. God is going to intervene. And God is going to destroy this coalition. And when you look at chapter number 39, he says, Therefore thou son of man prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief. Again, that's a Hebrew word, Rosh. doesn't really necessarily mean Rasha or Rasha. Rosh is just a Hebrew word. That just simply means chief, head, or leader of this invasion. He is the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Again, Meshach, Tubal, Ezekiel 38, to Gomer to Gomer, Ezekiel 38, 6, are areas that make up the Islamic state of Turkey today. He says in verse 2, And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the, says it again, the north part, or the literal Hebrew says the far north, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Isn't it interesting? God says, I'm going to turn you back and leave but a sixth part of you. In other words, five out of every six Islamists will be destroyed when they come against the Jews. Five sixths of them are wiped out. Five out of every six Muslims are destroyed. When they come up against the Jewish people. You know what that tells me folks? That tells me. That Islam will not even be a factor. In the tribulation period. Because Islam is an intolerant religion. They don't tolerate any other religion. You either convert to Islam or you die. That's your choice. There is no other choice. They are intolerant. And they're certainly not going to embrace a Gentile world ruler coming out of the revived Roman Empire and submit to him. So then they have to act. And they will act with Russia. But five, six of them are going to be destroyed. And when that happens, that will pave the way for this despot coming out of the revived Roman Empire of the European Union. And he will secure Israel's security, at least for the first three and a half years of it. Anyway, verse 4 says, Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the fields to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it. Say it. The Lord God. God says when it's all said and done. He's going to call for the carnivorous birds of the air. To feast upon the dead carcasses. Of this invading army. Verse 17 says this. And thou son of man. Thus saith the Lord God. Speak unto every feathered fowl. And to every beast of the field. Assemble yourself. And come. Gather yourselves on every side. To my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. And you know, when it's all said and done, Israel will be burning their weapons for seven years. And then God says he's going to prepare a burial place for Russia and her invading Arab armies. It's a place that's east of the Jordan River, a place called the Valley of Hamengog. 
That is in the area of what is called the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan today, on the east side of the Jordan River. In Ezekiel 39, 11, it says this, And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto God a place, or a burial place, there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, that's east of the Jordan River, and it shall stop the nose, the noses of the passengers. And there shall they bury God and all his multitude. And they shall call it the valley of Hamangog. Again in verse 15. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall be then shall be set up a sign by it. So the barriers have buried in, in it the valley of Hammond God. Again, east of the Jordan River today. When the dust settles and the smoke clears, Russia, Turkey, Iran, Libya, Ethiopia, Sudan, Somalia will all be destroyed. They will all be buried east of the Jordan River in Hamangog. And Israel will be burning their weapons for seven years. Do weapons burn? Do tanks burn? I've seen it. Remember the Persian Gulf War? Between 1990 and 1991, when Saddam and uh yeah, he was insane. Saddam Hussein and the Iraqi forces were defeated by U.S. coalition troops. And those allies were in Kuwait. Tanks were on fire. They were burning, man. Tanks were burning. It was unbelievable. That's exactly what Israel is going to be doing. Burning the weapons of war for seven years. Could this be in reference to the seven year period of tribulation? It could be. We don't know for sure. The implication could be there. All I know is this, folks. That we see the seeds beginning to sprout. The focus is becoming clear. Russia is about to lead her Arab allies to invade Israel. And I believe this could happen after the rapture of the church. Possibly. So folks, all I know is simply this. The stage is set and the actors are in place and the curtain is about to go off on the end time job. And we know the next prophetic event on God's timetable is the rapture of the church of the living God, which could be today. We don't know the day and the hour, but I do believe we're living in the times and the seasons of the coming of the Lord. So as I bring this broadcast to a close, I notice that Sula Stasi is in the room with us, my pastor, Dr. Jeff Ansbach, is with us in the room. Uh, Dula Marissa Gutierrez is with us. Melissa Ola is with us. That's Timmy Ola's wife there in Austin, Texas. Lisa Blake, Renee Carver Link, Nancy Melton, Shane Hickman, all of them are with us in the room. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope and pray that this study would be a blessing to you. If you tuned in late, you can look at the archive once I upload it. And you can listen from the beginning. Don't forget to visit my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Sign up for our newsletters while you are there. Navigate around the website. Look at my speaking schedule. We're here until Thursday, and then we fly to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then drive to West Virginia, spend a night or so there, 
and then we will make our way to Grace Baptist Church in Lorraine, Ohio, where I will be preaching a weekend Bible prophecy conference. And then uh, we'll go into Indiana, spend a week or so there with our daughter, who lives there in Indiana. And then we will make our way into West Virginia, where we will spend the majority of our time. And then uh, we're going to be gone pretty much the whole month of August. And then we will um, come back, I believe, on September the 3rd. So our plate is full. And uh, we're looking forward to meeting all of our friends and making new friends when we go back out on the road. So we're praying that you would uh, pray for us, pray for God's travel mercies, pray for souls to be saved, and just praying for a good time. So check out my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. And if our ministry has been a blessing to you, you enjoy our Bible prophecy teaching, then we encourage you to help support our ministry. Others do that at $20 a month, others periodically, or one-time gift. You can do that by hitting the PayPal button at the bottom of the webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org, and pray about what the Lord will have you to do. And so don't forget, we'll be on tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., Eastern Standard Time. And remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we will talk to you, Lord willing, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, guys. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you have a blessed week. And we will talk to you soon. Have a great day, and God bless.